Hey, GED students, it's GED question of the daytime, and we've been working on some pretty simple two and three step equations uh, to build up our skills for the big day on the GED when you are going to have to solve mm, five and six step equations, some complex ones. So um, this one um, is pretty challenging as far as three steps go. Let's take a look. So first of all, just note that the directions do say solve the equation. Um, and so I am going to do just that. I am going to work to get this letter. This letter P alone. Um, and so that is my goal. And so I have a lot of things to get rid of. I have this negative 5 here, which appears to be multiplying. I have this 3 here. That's an exponent. See how it's floating in the sky? And I have this 2 here, which is adding... Now remember, when we're solving, uh, we work the order of operations backwards. We undo math. Since we're undoing math instead of doing it, we'll do it in the opposite order. So we should move anything adding or subtracting first. So I'm going to send that negative 22, or I'm going to send the 22, I should say, over to the other side by doing the opposite. The opposite of add is subtract. So I'll subtract a 22 from both sides. Notice how this other 22, I went way all the way over across the equal sign. You need to be on the other side. Um, okay, now let's see what my new equation will be here. 17 minus 22, you can do that in your calculator if you need to, but it should give you negative 5. And on this side, adding 22 and subtracting 22 are opposites. They'll cancel, and so this is what we'll have left. Negative 5p cubed, or p to the third power, but I'm a lazy mathematician. I say p cubed. Now, after you get rid of anything adding or subtracting, the next thing to take away is multipliers. And we do have a multiplier here. Remember that negative 5 was shoved up against P, so it's multiplying. So that's what I'll get rid of now. Um, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to divide by negative 5. I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. On this side, multiplying and dividing by negative 5 will cancel. And all I have left over there then is that P cubed. That will drop. And then that's equal to, well, negative 5 divided by negative 5. Anything divided by itself is 1. So we just get this 1 is equal to p cubed. Now a lot of people would stop right here. Don't stop right here. Uh, do get rid of the cube. So just like, and this is where a lot of students get stuck. So if you don't know your inverses, make sure this is in your notes. The inverse or opposite of add is subtract. The inverse or opposite of multiply is divide. The inverse of oppos or opposite of square, and that's on the GED a lot, is square root. And the inverse or opposite of cube is cube root. So I want to get rid of a cube, so I will use the cube root. I'm going to put this little check mark with a 3 in the check mark on both sides, and that's actually called a radical. So putting this little radical with an index of 3, it's the third root. On both sides of the equation, it's legal because I did it to both sides. Oh, I should have done it in orange and stayed consistent. I want you guys to be able to see my balanced change every time. Okay, now let's see what happens after we do that. On this side, cube and cube root cancel, and I get p. And on this side, now, I hope you guys know that the cube root of 1 happens to also be 1. But if you don't, let me show you how to put this into your TI calculator. The GED calculator will do cube roots, uh, but you have to know how to type it in. So here's how you do it. You type 3 first. You need that. It's called an index. Okay, and then you're going to push the second button. That's the green button up at the top left. And you need that because the x root is actually in green right above that caret. Okay, so I'm going to press 3, and then the second button, and then that caret button. And you should see your 3 kind of like jump up into the sky there. Then I'll type 1 and enter, and you do find out that the key root of... One is just one. It doesn't always work that way, guys. But um, So uh, the answer to this, what P would have to be to make this equation true, is simply one. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them.